The Commonwealth of Massachusetts versus Lizzie A. Borden, a dramatic reading of the full trial transcript. Day 5, Friday, June 9, 1893, New Bedford, Massachusetts. Chief Justice Mason and Justices Blodgett and Dewey presided. The state was represented by the Honorable Hosea M. Knowlton and William H. Moody, Esquire. The defense was represented by the Honorable George D. Robinson, the Honorable Andrew J. Jennings, and Melvin O. Adams, Esquire. Part 3 Cross-examination of Captain Harrington by Mr. Robinson of the defense. You got there about 12.20. About that. Yes, sir. How long did you stay before leaving the premises entirely? By entirely, you mean the first time, of course. Did you go there to the house more than once that day? Yes, I went in the afternoon. Later in the afternoon, I went there. You went there at 12.20, and how long did you stay at that time? Mm, well, about that, I, I can't say. Well, can't you give the jury some idea? Well, possibly... 20 minutes or half an hour. Was it during that time that you had the talk with Ms. Lizzie? Yes. You went later in the afternoon about what time? I couldn't say about what time, but I should think about half past two or three o'clock. How long did you stay then? I stayed then until close to six. And during that second visit, did you have any more talk with Ms. Lizzie? Uh, no, sir. Well, your talk with her then was right at 12 o'clock or between 12 and 1? Uh, yes, sir. A good many people about there at that time? There were. A good deal of excitement? Well, it wasn't demonstrated. What? I didn't see any demonstrations of excitement. Everybody was quiet and peaceable. You think that everybody was perfectly collected and calm, all the people around the house there outside? Well, they didn't show any indications of being otherwise, more than walking around and talking casually. Well, I don't mean there was any riot, but whether there was any excitement such as there would be, you don't know about that? No, sir. Do you recall your asking her at the interview whether she had any suspicion of any of the farm help? I did not, sir. You think so? No, sir. You testified over in the district court? Yes, sir. May I read you something and see if you recollect? She said she could tell me nothing at all at the time you were asking her what account she could give. Yes, sir. You remember that question? Yes. I will read right along until I come to that part, which I want you to particularly notice. I asked her if she could tell me anything more about this. She said she could tell me nothing at all. I then asked her when she last saw her father. She said when he returned from the post office, he had some mail. Now, this is in quotations as her statement. I asked him had he any mail for me, and he said no. Then I asked her who was in the house at the time she saw him murdered. She said there was nobody there that she knew of but the girl, Maggie, and herself. She called her Maggie. I asked her where she was at the time the murder was committed. She said in the barn. Now I call your attention to what I read next. I then asked her if she had any suspicion of the farm help. That was owing to what I had heard. The reason I asked that was from something I had heard. She said, no, they are reliable men and have been in our employ for several years. Do you recall that? Yes, I do now. That is so, isn't it, Mr. Harrington? Yes, sir. And that was said at that time? Yes, sir. This interview that you had with her was somewhere between 12 and 1 o'clock? Yes, sir. Did you see Mr. Fleet there during that time? At the conversation, the interview? No, not in the room, but did you see him on the premises? Didn't you see him before? I think not, sir. Do you know whether or not he had any interview with her? No, sir. Do you know whether anyone had? No, sir. You advised her not to be interviewed any more that day, didn't you? Uh, yes, sir. Did she know that you were one of the police? I sh should think so. I was dressed in uniform. Dressed in uniform. And you told her that she had better not be interviewed by anybody any more that day? Yes, sir. Do you know whether she was interviewed by Mr. Fleet after that? No, sir. You do not know about that? No, sir. Nor how many times he went there? No, sir. Nor any other of the officers? No, sir. You were then a patrolman? I was, sir. And promoted when? The 10th day of February last. You are now a captain? Yes, sir. You said, speaking of Mr. Borden as he was laid upon the sofa, did he have slippers on? No, sir. What kind of boots did he have on? He had a laced shoe. Do you mean a low shoe? Uh, no, sir. A laced high shoe? Yes, sir. 
You're pretty certain about that? Uh, yes, sir. It was not a Congress boot? No, sir. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. You are certain about that. Have you ever seen the photograph of the body as it is presented here? Not the photograph, no, sir. The crime scene photo of the body of Andrew J. Borden was shown to the jury. Will you look at those shoes? Your eyes are better than mine, but will you kindly tell us whether those are a correct representation? Not as they impress me, sir. Then, as you recall it, this is not correct. As I recall it? Then, seeing this, having this to refresh your recollection, do you change your statement? No, sir. You leave it that he had on laced boots. My impression was laced boots. Well, that is merely a matter of recollection, I suppose, on your part. You were not excited at that time? Well, no, sir, I don't think I was. You had full possession of all your faculties? Well, I thought so. All the time you were there, notwithstanding, you had seen these horrible sights? Yes, sir. Did you ever see worse ones in your life? No, sir. That did not shake you a particle? Well, it, it disturbed me some, but I, I don't think I lost my reasoning faculties. Or your perceptive faculties? No, sir. I don't think I did. Well, now, you think you got that dress that Miss Lizzie had on, all right? I do think so, yes. Did you make any memoranda at the time of her dress? I th think I did, sir. Have you got it with you? No, sir. Do you think you could state it again to me, all the details of that pink wrapper? I can try. I would like to have you begin at the beginning and give it all. Have you seen it since, let me ask you? Yes. Oh, you have? Yes, sir. Did that refresh your recollection? Yes, sir. When did you see it? Tuesday. The 9th of August. You would not have remembered it then, would you, unless you had gone to work and looked it all over? I think I would, sir. Did you take the description, or did some lady? I took it myself, sir. If you had not examined it for that special purpose... I wrote it down from my recollection. When did you write it? I think it was the Sunday following. That is before you had a chance to look at it again? Yes, sir. You have not the paper with you? Uh, no, sir. Now, are you going to give it to us as the result of your recollection of what you saw on the 4th of August? Well, I'm going to give it to you for my recollection and, and the assistance of the notes that I took in reading them. I, I read them, of course. Yes, but the notes you took on what day? I think it was the Sunday, the, the Sunday following. You had not seen the dress between the 4th and Sunday? No, sir. Now you're going to give me just what you recollect on Thursday afternoon? Uh, yes, sir. I will hear it. She was dressed in a plain or in a house wrap, striped in pattern, a pink and light stripe al alternating, uh, pink the most prominent color or shade. On the light stripe was a diamond figure formed by small bars or stripes, some of which ran parallel with the stripe and others biased to it, or diagonally. It was fitted to the form on the sides, stand-up collar, plated on the sides, and closely shirred in front. Closely what? Uh, shirred. Gathered closely. Smaller plates in the front. Well, go on. Explain it to these gentlemen here. Uh, yes, sir. From the waist to the neck, it was puffed. Uh, quite a number of folds in it. On either side, directly over the hip, was caught a small, narrow, bright red ribbon, uh, about three quarters of an inch or an inch in width. This was a pink dress? Uh, yes, sir. Not altogether pink. And it had a red ribbon. Uh, pink was the predominating color, I said. What other color was there in it? A light ground. Did you intend to interrupt him, Governor? You asked him to describe the dress, and he had not quite finished. I did not intend to interfere. I asked, as we often do in the course of a long description, so as to make it plain. Go on with your description, sir. The ribbon was brought around in front and tied in a bow and allowed to droop. The dress was cut in a semi-train or bell skirt, as was worn by ladies that season. Don't go quite so fast. Cut in what? Uh, a bell skirt. Bell skirt? Yes, sir. Have you got through? I don't want to interrupt you. Uh, I think that completes the dress, sir. You usually called that kind of dress a bell skirt, did you? Uh, the cut of the dress, not that kind of dress. That was your description of it as you spoke in conversation about it? Uh, yes, sir. Nobody told you that? No, sir. What has been your business before you came a policeman? Directly before, sir? Yes, sir. I would like that first. I was in the painting business. Painting? Yes, sir. What before that? Uh, I was in the book business before that. Prior to that? Yes. Uh, the wood business. Were you ever in the dressmaking business? Uh, no, sir. Were you ever in the dry goods business? No, sir. 
Did you ever have anything to do with colors except as a painter? Did you say you were a painter? Uh, yes, sir. Did you ever have anything to do with colors except as a painter? Um, nothing any more than to admire them. You admire them. But did you admire a red ribbon on a pink wrapper? Well, I am not speaking of my taste, sir. It was so, was it? Uh, yes, sir. You speak of seeing Dr. Bowen about ready to throw some pieces of paper or odds and ends into the stove? Uh, no, sir. I, I didn't say that. I said he held some scraps of note paper in his hand as I entered the kitchen. And which he did on raising the cover put right in? Afterwards, yes, sir. It is admitted that it is nothing to do with the case, but there was no withholding it from you? No, sir. You saw the word Emma written in pencil on one part of it? I did, sir. And Dr. Bowen said it had something to do about some reference to his daughter? Uh, going through somewhere. I beg pardon? His daughter. Going through somewhere. He, he thought that. It referred to their affairs. Had you paid any attention to the stove before that? No, sir. Any more than to see it as I passed by. You saw it? And then you took off the cover in the ordinary way? Yes, sir. And put these papers in? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Did he take off the cover over the little spot of coal you said there was there? No, sir. Took it off at the other end? At the other end. So he threw it right down in where there wasn't any fire? Yes, sir. And upon some embers of burnt paper? Uh, no, sir. It went down between that burnt paper and the front part of the firebox. That is, this lay a little to the back, and that was a piece of burnt paper? Yes, sir. Rolled up? Completely carbonized. About a foot long? Ah, uh, yes, sir. And I think you said about an inch or two inches? Mm, I thought about two. Lying there all charred and burned? Yes, sir. What time did Dr. Dolan come? You said after that time, or at that time, Dr. Dolan came in, and did you mean came in from outdoors? Uh, no, sir. I thought he came from the cellar door into the entry. I don't care to go out to the barn except that you are not very clear about the curtain, are you? I am not, sir. And when you say that it was probably rolled up, that is indistinct in your memory? No, sir. That is not indistinct. I said, if it were there. I know, but if you do not know it was there, you cannot be very certain? I say that because I recollect distinctly of seeing the lower part of the window. Don't you remember now, when you come to think it over, there was an old curtain there which was quite ragged or dilapidated and kind of pulled one side? Isn't that the way it strikes you? I am not clear on that, sir. Kind of yellowish? I am not clear on that. You cannot place that. And about the window, the west window, whether that was open or shut? It was not when we entered. Not open or not shut? It was not open when we entered. It was not open when you got there. Well, is that pretty clear in your mind? Yeah, I, th I think it is. The reason I say that, one of the officers... No matter about the reason. Recalling you again to the testimony at Fall River, let me read a question. Question. What windows are there? Answer. On the east, and one on the west, and in the middle of the barn facing the south, there is a door. That was open when I got there. Is that correct? No, sir. That is not so, then? No, sir. Is that the way you testified before? Well, you say it is there, but that door was shut, sir. The door down on the level with yard? Uh, no, no, sir, no. The door in the loft. The door on the level with the yard was open. The door in the loft was not? Yes, sir. Well, perhaps that is what it means. On the east, speaking of the windows, and one on the west, and in the middle of the barn facing the south, there is a door. Yes, sir. You understand that is referring to a door in the loft? On the loft. Yes, sir. That door was open when you got there? No, sir. Well, now, were you in error, or did you testify correctly at that time? Is that a correct statement of your testimony? As I recollected... No, sir. That door was closed. And if I stated so at the time, it must have been an error. Then I will read on. How were the windows open or shut? Answer. The windows on the west was open. Is that correct? I am not clear, sir. I, I feel now, or, th or think now, rather, that it was closed when we went there. I'm almost sure of that, but it is possible to be mistaken in all this long time. I, I have not read those notes or reread them since, sir. 
And in justice to you, I will read what follows so you can have the benefit of it. The window on the west was open. This was your answer. Question towards the front. Answer, yes, I think, but I am not certain that some of the men opened the window on the east to get air. It was very warm upstairs. Now, does the reading of what follows help you to remember about the west window? It does not. And you do not now say you know how it was, do you? Uh, Well, I am speaking as I see it now. As I think it now. As you see it now, but as you saw it then, it was the other way, was it? As you saw it in the district court, I mean? Well, about that I cannot say now, sir. Down cellar you found, you will please state, what of the implements that are produced here? There was an axe and one or two hatchets lying on the floor of the washroom. Do you remember whether the one with the claw head was there? It was not, sir. That is, the one that resembles the one that is just shown me was not there. There was one axe? Yes, sir. That I thought was missing. An axe that I had seen earlier in the day with Dr. Dolan. Two hatchets? One, sir, I said was missing. One hatchet was missing? Yes, sir. I do not quite get it, excuse me. You found down there on the washroom floor what, if you please? Uh, One axe in either one or two hatchets. I think two. Well, was one of those two hatchets the one with the claw head? Well, I don't distinctly recollect whether they had claw heads or not. Well, you spoke of finding some other implements. That is the one that I said was missing. And what was that when you found it? It had a claw head on it and a broad blade. You think there were two hatchets besides that? I I think so. Is this the one? I can't say, sir. It resembles that. Did you say that you assisted in finding it? I found it. And where did you find it? On a chopping block in the west end of the cellar. That is towards the street? Yes, sir. You did not find it in that room where the barrels are? Uh, no, sir. Vinegar barrels or something of that kind? No, sir. Around behind a box? Uh, No, sir. I found it on a chopping block. Oh, on a chopping block. Did you say anything about finding some of these things behind a box? No, sir. That was earlier, uh, by some other witness. Well, that is all, Mr. Harrington. I will ask you, uh, was this upon the block or sticking into it? Lying on the block. Side down? Yes, sir, as it is now. Was that in the afternoon, late? Uh, about, well, I I can't tell the time on that, but it was after we had searched the barn. That was late in the afternoon. Yes, sir. Mr. Robinson completes the cross-examination of Captain Philip Harrington. Captain Harrington is excused. The Lizzie Borden Trial Day 5 featured Christine Daniels as George Robinson, Keith Morrison as William H. Moody, Robin McKittrick as Philip Harrington. This production was produced by Lion's Den Audio Theater. Subscribe to Lion's Den Audio Theater on YouTube to receive notifications of upcoming audio releases. I'm your Day 5 announcer, Ron Newcomb, and from everyone at Lion's Den Audio, stay healthy, stay happy, and stay safe. <laughs>